Hi, I'm uh, Seba or Sebastian. Uh, welcome to this uh, demo or hands-on demo of uh, whiteboard hacking. Uh, whiteboard hacking actually is thread modeling. And what I'll do is I'll take a very simple use case and demonstrate how you can do thread modeling with something as simple as a whiteboard. So thread modeling does not have to be complicated. You can perform thread modeling based on what you're doing a whiteboard having a discussion around your design and actually debug your design in terms of security. And that's what threat modeling really is about. Now, as I said, so my name is uh, Seba or Sebastian de Leersneider. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Torion. Uh, we've been doing threat modeling for more than 15 years now, uh, do lots of trainings around this, and we're also a trainings uh, partner of Iris Risk. So, what is threat modeling? Threat modeling is really about understanding what can go wrong in your system or your design. And from that understanding, decide on what to do next. So it's, it's an activity where you identify and really follow up or manage on application risk. And so, but let's, um, let's take an example. So say, for example, you have in your next uh, story uh, implementation or your next uh, sprint, you have to implement a user story, which typically is structured as a persona. I need or want to do something with a certain effect. And in this case, let's imagine we have an e-commerce environment where we want as an end user, want to pay as part of our checkout. Uh, we have a new shiny device or gadget we want to buy, and we need to add a payment functionality to our e-commerce environment. So what does that mean? Uh, actually, when we need to add payment functionality to an e-commerce app, it means that we'll have to consider what kind of service to uh, to use. Uh, we'll have to select a payment gateway provider. This can be PayPal, Stripe, or any any other service. Um, we'll have to set up an account with them. Uh, we'll have to register with them. Uh, we'll also have to make sure that we can have an, an API credential to connect to them, uh, to uh, connect our functionality. We'll have to integrate uh, our way of working, our functionality through an SDK or a library um, or some code uh, and obviously implement that payment functionality and then handle any uh, notifications uh, in, in terms of understanding what the statement of that payment was. Um, and, that's, and that's how it works. We obviously need to test that, uh, integrate it. Um, we'll also have to consider security uh, and compliance and regulations around that the moment you're starting to process credit card information, so probably PCI and so on. So that, um, that's typically how it would work. Um, so how does threat modeling or whiteboard hacking come into that picture? So what I'll do is I'll explain the four steps of threat modeling through our own acronym. Uh, we had to come up with an acronym, but through DICE. And DICE actually are the four steps of threat modeling. And the D stands for diagramming. We'll have to understand what kind of functionality are we building, what are we adding to our application, uh, and that's true diagramming. So that's the first step. Second step is to understand what can go wrong. Uh, that is through identification of threats, uh, the I in identification of threats. Obviously, with the idea to understand, okay, what kind of countermeasures do we have or what are missing? And so what are we going to do about these threats? And that's really the, the step where we're debugging the security level of our implementation. And then the follow-up step, and this is through iterations, actually, uh, we, we evaluate what we have done uh, as part of our threat modeling in terms of our process, what can we do better next time, but also... Um, evaluation of the security level of what we've uh, come up with. So did we do a good enough job? That's the E in DICE. Now, I'll be demonstrating this in the next step with a whiteboard. So over to the next step. So, okay, enough uh, talking now. Let's try to debug our, our design here. That's actually what uh, what threat modeling is about. So what we need here is a whiteboard or a flip chart or a piece of paper, and you'll have to talk this through with with, with your colleague or with your security team, or if you have an AppSec champion, involve him or her as part of your 
design. So let's uh, let's do a recap. Uh, so uh, we'll have uh, to perform our dice steps. Uh, so we'll have a, a diagram, identification of threats, countermeasures, and evaluation. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So diagram. The first step is, so what are we trying to build here? Um, we're going to have a user and a payment gateway a provider as uh, involved parties in our system. Now, in a data flow diagram, we use squares. So we have our users. That is a square. And we'll have a payment gateway. That is also a square. So these are what we call external entities or actors in the data flow diagram. And so it means uh, we'll be essentially be looking at, are we sure we're talking to these uh, users or systems? And do we have traceability around those, uh, those involved parties? Uh, and that's, that's the built-in system of applying in the next step identification of threats. But first, obviously, we'll have um, our implementation uh, we'll be using an SDK of the payment gateway provider to actually uh, build that payment button and actually build that logic. So that's in data flow diagramming a process. So we'll have a payment flow as part of our e-commerce app that we're going to build ourselves. So that's our own logic. Hence, that's a process. That's a circle in a data flow diagram. And we have the user performing the payment and we'll be forwarding that to the payment gateway provider. So these are the data flows as part of a data flow diagram. Actually with the payment information as part of the data that is being exchanged as part of the data flow, di uh, data flow diagram. So in essence, what we have here is how is this going to work? Um, now, what we also have here, and remember from what I explained earlier on, when we are connecting to the payment gateway provider, we also need to have some credentials to make sure that we, the payment gateway provider, it's, it's, the payment is coming from us. So we'll have to somehow retrieve those credentials from our system. And in essence, here that means that we'll have to store that somewhere, either in a file or a config uh, setting or in a database, but we'll have some credentials to, or to connect to our external API from the payment gateway provider. So here they are. And this is in a data flow diagram, a store. Uh, so we'll have the credentials that we'll be using to also like, when we ever we connect to the API of the payment gateway provider that actually we authenticate ourselves. So that's the diagramming part. And that's step one of following our dice, uh, dice flow. Now, the next step is to understand what are potential threats to our system. And there's different ways we can do that. Uh, there's different checks or questions that we might ask ourselves. Um, one technique that we use a lot is to apply the six stride questions. And stride is actually, so we'll be looking at S, T, R, Y, D, and E. It's spoofing, tampering, repudiation threats, information disclosure threats, denial of service threats, and elevation of privilege threats. So what, what this means is we're going to look at, and we're going to ask ourselves, or together when we're looking at, at our system and we're debugging essentially the security of our design, what are the six threats to our system and what do we have in our system to protect against those threats? What are the countermeasures we have? Uh, and spoofing is about how are we sure that the users or the systems that are involved in our system actually are the ones they claim to be. And uh, the way we're going to, to look at this is uh, when we look at our diagram, where does spoofing apply? Now, how do we do that? How do we map strides on our diagram, we actually also need to add something called uh, what is called a trust boundary. And so we have, we've used black for the, the data flow diagram. We're going to introduce another color, red. 
trust boundaries. Now, trust boundaries are in our system, in our data flow diagram, locations where potentially an attacker might try to intervene and attack our system. You can also look at this from a point of view of trust levels. Where are trust levels changing between the different components in our data flow diagram? Now, when we look at our data flow diagram here, uh, between the user and our logic, we'll have a trust boundary. And this is typically that this is a red line, trust boundary one, where between the user and our logic, potentially attackers might try to intervene with these transactions. There's actually also a second trust boundary between our logic and the payment gateway provider. Yeah, because maybe there might be attackers that are going to try to interfere with this connection. So those are two trust boundaries that might be of importance here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just ask these six tried questions and we're looking at these six tried threats towards these two trust boundaries. Now in our case, in our system, in our design, uh, imagine we have already authenticated the user right, as part of an earlier uh, logic or feature. But as part of our use case that we are, we are looking at our user story here, we're building in, we're adding the payment gateway provider. And obviously we want to make sure that when we connect to that payment gateway provider, that we have an authentication logic built in. And that is to prevent against the spoofing threat. Uh, is there a way that an attacker might try to intervene in this logic and uh, either impersonate as a payment gateway provider or impersonate as us connecting towards that payment gateway provider. But actually what we have in place here are these credentials to connect to the API. So we'll have here the payment gateway credentials where we, whenever we connect to the payment gateway API, we authenticate ourselves towards that system. Now, actually, how it's implemented, the technical details there, how do we protect that? That's part of implementation. We're now looking really at the design. What kind of design choices do we make? Uh, and in this case, having these credentials is good enough in our setup here to see, okay, we've covered strides when we look at the payment gateway provider. Um, other threats uh, might also apply. So let's look have a look at potentially repudiation do we have some traceability of what has happened um, in terms of payments so at a at certain moment in time whenever we have users that come back to us and say like i did pay but i didn't get my like uh, my fancy gadget um, how can we check this well in our current setup we don't have that okay? so that's actually a potential design flaw here uh, which maps on a thread called repudiation. Can somebody involved, in this case a user, can they have um, a scenario where they can deny having done something? So that means that we actually have a design flaw here. So we don't have a means to actually protect against that scenario. And so that's, that's actually the, 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 the threat here that we don't have a control for. Now, in this case, what we might try to do is, okay, what's the best way to protect against this? That is by having a trail, an audit trail, to actually capture what has happened with every payment. So every time when users pay and we have our payment gateway provider, we'll also have like a callback functionality with the status of the payments and we'll be storing that status in our audit trail. In that way, we actually, we're going to add that audit trail here as an extra control in our part of our, uh, of our design. That's a choice. We're adding that extra security measure to protect against repudiation, that particular repudiation threats. So what we've done here is we've looked at potential threats through stride. We've looked at countermeasures, which, which we already have or we don't have, and we decide upon adding these as part of the design or not.
And that's really it. There is nothing more, and but also nothing less, to thread modeling. It's debugging your design on a whiteboard, talking this through with your colleagues, talking this through with a security uh, specialist or a subject matter expert, um, and have uh, the people involved understand what you're building, going over potential threats, evaluating potential countermeasures, and then like seeing, okay, is this good enough? And the next step is going to be like, okay, we've decided this, we're adding this to our backlog in terms of feature to also build, uh, build in that particular con control. And we make sure that we document this. And documenting this can be nothing more than adding a picture of this in your um, in your repository, uh, in your confluence, uh, that whenever next time when you're going to look back at this user story or this uh, implementation, that you know why have we decided upon adding this audit trail. So that, that traceability end-to-end -end is actually what you, an additional benefit of doing this as part of your debugging through whiteboard. So that's it. Uh, this is a very low-tech uh, means of doing this. Obviously, you can also do this with tooling, um, but that are the very basic steps of doing DICE, applying DICE on any new feature that you might come up and evaluating potential threats and considering countermeasures together with your peers. So now you've seen how we can do threat modeling with a whiteboard. So what are the next steps here? Well, the next step is really, okay, take this a step further. How can we come better at that? That is typically through training. So we offer lots of training around threat modeling. So make sure to uh, to get in touch with us if you, uh, if you think that is necessary. The next step is to also integrate that whiteboard hacking in your development um, way of working so that you can actually, as a product team or development team, own your own threat model you'll have to integrate that way of working. And then last but not least, if you want to scale this up and automate this, you'll also have to look at uh, at some tooling where obviously it is risk is one uh, one way of, or one kind of tool to be looking at. So with that, um, if you want to uh, get more news or updates on, uh, on threat modeling and what we're doing, we have a monthly newsletter called the Threat Modeling Insider, uh, where with guest articles, tips and tricks, and uh, probably also a recording of this one so um, I recommend that you uh, register for that and with that if you have any questions or whatsoever uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us and with me I do respond to email it might take some time also don't hesitate to follow me or connect to me on LinkedIn thank you very much and see you next time